So this is the prediction question for the econometrics uh, exercise. Uh, so let's have a look at the question. We have a regression model and that is just very standard, has two explanatory variables x and z. So the question is you want to generate the conditional expectation, so this is important here. And that means that we have two values here on which we want to condition the expectation cx and cz. So that means you know, we are concerned about a particular observation where the x value takes the value cx, uh, we could give it a number but I'll just leave it as a, as a variable, and the value for the uh, explanatory variable z takes the value of cz. Now demonstrate that an estimate of the constant in the following regression equation can be used as an estimate of this guy. Okay, so the constant is here. So basically, what this question, so we're going to start with question A, we're going to look at uh, B later. So, what this question suggests is that this D, or an estimate that D had, is the same as this guy, okay, the expected value of y given x equals cx and z equals cz. So the solution is sort of given in this question. Uh, we just have to show how to how to get that solution. Now, of course, we know that when we um, if you were to just use model one, okay, from how would we use model one to get this expectation? From model one, we would get x equals cx, z equals cz. What we would use is we would use alpha plus beta times xi, but the x value now takes the value cx plus, oh sorry, that was beta 1, plus beta 2 times the z value, which is cz. And I, I now leave the, the, the hats away, the estimators, but um, I'll, I'll do that with the d as well, but you could carry them through as well. So, what we, uh, and but now we are saying, is that this guy is equal to d. So what we're now going to do is we're going to just work this problem backwards. So let us, because we will need it, call this one equation 3. And uh, in fact, yeah, so let's go back. So we're going to, I said we're going to work backwards. We work from 2. Okay, from equation 2 and we say yi equals d but what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to factor out these parentheses so times beta 1 uh, times xi plus beta 1 times cx and then plus beta 2 times zi minus beta 2 times cz plus an error term. Now I shall just bring the uh, the terms with the sets. Uh, sorry, with the uh, c's. Okay, that guy and that guy. I'll bring that further to the front just to see what's happening. So I'll have minus beta one cx and minus beta two cz and plus beta one xi plus beta 2 z i plus u i. So, and now we can use uh, we can use equation 3. This guy here is just the same as alpha. You can see that from 3 if we bring both of these terms across to the other side you get alpha equals d minus these two terms and that's what we have here. So from 3, we know that this equals alpha. So therefore, 
we'll have yi equals alpha plus beta 1 xi plus beta 2 zi plus ui. So, and now you basically, what, what we have demonstrated is that um, for if we estimate 2 and if we replace uh, if we replace back for d using our sort of knowledge, the solution that was given already, we'll just get model one uh, back again. So you know, they're basically uh, they are the same as long as we impose this interpretation. Okay, so this interpretation here was imposed, and you know, in the reverse conclusion, you can say, well, then. That's good. That means from this equation two, we can get this estimate d. And uh, as we'll see below, the, the advantage of that is not really for the d because we can calculate this guy here just as easily. But it's the standard error of the d which we get from equation two that will be useful. So this is in fact the second question here, part b of the question. It asks what interpretation does the standard error of d hat have? Okay, so basically just to um, to make sure what we uh, what the d is, okay, the d hat is gonna be the same as our expected value of y given cx and cz. Okay, x being equal to c, cx and z being equal to cz. So the uh, variance of d hat, okay, that's what we get from uh, we get that from an all s regression of equation two, okay. What's the interpretation of that? That is basically the variance of y conditioning on cx and cz. Now in the lecture we called this the standard error squared because it's the variance. For we had two versions, the average and the individual, and this is the average. Okay, so now this you just have to know. When you estimate model 2, what you get as the uh, standard deviation squared or the variance of the estimated d, so of the d hat, is this guy. The variance y conditional on uh, these two values. It's really only conditional on these two values because they were used quite explicitly in model 2. Okay, they appeared in the model. So this is really specific to this set of explanatory variables. So just a brief reminder, what was the average? Uh, what did the average means? That means when we're estimating the average outcome y given all observations that have values cx for x and cz for z. Okay, not the outcome, not the variance of the outcome of an individual, but the outcome of the average of across all individuals with these characteristics. So let's continue with the second prediction question. So that's less theoretically. Here we get our hands dirty. Here is, um, I thought that was the question. Let me cut it again. Here is the question. So you can all read this and have read this uh, yourself. So first thing we need to do is we need to fire up eViews. Here it is. Uh, it's my old version. I haven't managed to access the new one from home where I have my recording equipment. And we want a new work file. Now I know I just checked in Excel the data. We have 500 observations. So. 500 observations and I import the data. I, I always like just copying and pasting the data. I personally find that quickest. Just need to get the names right. 
of the series. So the first one is called GPA in uh, actually uh, let me just close that. Uh, so first one is called GPA. Second one is H size. Third is H S perk. And the last one is the SAT score. So here we go. So here's our EVS you can close Excel, not required anymore. And here we go. So about that we have four variables um, a student's GPA after fall semester okay so you see all the definitions so the question is now the following your cousin John's graduation class had 500 students he was amongst 27 percent best students in his year his set test result was 950 produced a 95 percent confidence interval for John's predictors for semester GPA. So what we need to do is we basically now need to run a regression of the type two. Okay, so this type of regression. What? Oops, I was not what I wanted to do. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to copy this down. So we can just basically replicate what we need to do in this. In this case, so our y is um, is confirmed from a predicted fall GPA. Um, so that's call GPA. That's dependent variable. So we need to estimate call GPA i equals a constant plus beta 1 times and now the three uh, the explanatory variables are h size hs perk and sat so let's say beta 1 times h size i but now we need to um, subtract whatever value we have for John. So let's do, before we continue, we just say John's values are for H size 500 students, but we're measured in uh, 100, so it's 5. For HS perk, um, it's, uh, what is it, 27% best students, so that would be a 27. Look at the definition. Uh, how we define that, what the scaling is, and sat. And the sat score is uh, 950. So that means we have h size minus 5 plus beta 2 times hs perk minus 27 plus beta 3 times set, oh, I've got the i here, set i minus 950, which is John's score, plus an error term. Okay, and we know from the previous question, our d hat from here is going to be our expected value for call GPA given uh, these this bit of information I just I don't want to write too much given all this information okay so so let's do that in uh, eviews so we want a recreation with that variable that that and that we open an equation so uh, I have an aversion to having the constant 
as the last explanatory variable. So here we have h size, and what we now just do is we put parentheses around it and just say h size minus 5. That's as easy as it is. h as perk minus 27 and sat minus 950. And off we go. And you see here we have our regression coefficients. You know that all the slope coefficients will be exactly the same as if we hadn't done all these subtractions. But what we now get is the estimated constant and that is 2.5428. So estimated constant is 2.5428. We're also interested in the standard error of this guy, 0.0364. Let's just write it down. That is 0.0364. And what is that? That is the, uh, well, okay, the variance of d, but it's a standard error, so it's the square root of the variance of d. We also call that the standard error average as discussed in the previous question. Okay, so with this information what we uh, now need to do is we now need to go to our uh, confidence interval definition because that's what we want to do. Okay, We are supposed to produce a 95% confidence intervals for John's predicted uh, GPA. So we got the predicted value already. That's here. And we know a confidence interval is going to look like this. It's going to be a, a probability and we know that this probability is going to be 0.95 because that's what we are being asked for. Then what we are looking for is the cold GPA for uh, John. Let's put a capital J here. And we know that we'll have a lower bound. Lower bound and an upper bound. For the confidence interval. And we know that these, the bound is going to be centered. Let me just have a, a little line. It's going to be centered around our d hat. Okay, around our 2.5428. So in the lower bound is going to be somewhere here, and the upper bound somewhere here. The only question is, where exactly is it? Okay, in our normal standard uh, prediction intervals, they will be symmetric, so that will be the d hat will be smack bang in the center. So if it's smack bang in the center, then what we um, what we're going to have is that we have for the lower bound we will have d hat minus something and for the upper bound we'll have d hat plus something. So the question is what's the min plus minus something and here we are referring to the t table uh, so we need a value from the t table for alpha over 2 alpha is 5% uh, And we need the degrees of freedom. Well, we we'll have however many degrees of freedom we have in our model. How many parameters to be estimate? One, one, two, three, four. So it's n minus four. So and we have exactly the same here. T alpha over two n minus four. N is 500. Number of observations. And now times. And since we are meant to calculate a prediction interval for John, okay, an individual, what we need is the SE individual. SE individual. So at this stage, let's take stock and see what we uh, what we have here. We have that d hat value. We have that already. This guy here, we can read from the t-table, okay, and uh, possibly uh, it's obvious what it's going to be. Our n is so large that we can do a normal approximation and a, 
uh, in the normal distribution if we are looking for alpha over 2 or 2 sided at 95% what we get is 1.96 so put a, hat, uh, a tick here we know that so the only issue is this guy here SE int now of course we already have SE average so the question is now how do we calculate SE int the standard error for an individual uh, forecast and uh, it's a formula which you would just have to to know this is related to the SE average but how is it rela related this is not true okay that uh, equals not true firstly it's easier to relate the variances and the individual standard error or the individual variance is going to be larger than the uh, variance for a prediction for an average so something is going to be added what is going to be added is the standard error of our regression so let's see SE average we already have that is 0 0.0364 and that's squared plus the standard error of the regression so let's look at uh, EVs again here we go 0 0.05081 Okay, uh, a two rounded. So, all point five zero eight two. That was the standard error. So we need the square of that to get the variance. We calculate this. What you get is all point two five nine six. And now we want the standard error. So we want the standard error individual. That is the square root of this 0.2596 and that is going to be 0.5095 so if you compare these two values okay 0.0364 and this one you can see that the individual standard error is uh, is much much larger by one order of magnitude larger than the standard error of the average that means it is dominated by this guy Okay, by the standard error of the regression, so it means there's a lot of individual variation in this problem. So now we can go back to our prediction interval, so we can fill in all the values which we have. D hat is 2.5428 minus the T value we said that would be 1.96 times the standard error, that is this guy. 95 and that is going to be the lower bound the upper bound is going to be 2.5428 plus 1.96 times 0 0.5095 and the whole thing that probability will be 95 so the probability that John's GPA is going to be between these two values is going to be 95% so let's just calculate what they are I've done that previously so if I've done my maths right what we get here is 1.544 as the lower bound and 3.542 as the upper bound. Okay, so let's just briefly look at the data again, college GPA, um, just to, to put this into perspective, this interval, is that large or small? Uh, it's possibly easiest if we look at some summary statistics for college GPA. So what can we see here? We see that um, the mean is 2.718 and the standard deviation 0 0.64 so we can see that this um, and we have minimum and maximum minimum is 0 0.5 maximum is 4 so if you think about the whole range 0 0.5 to 4 our prediction interval really hasn't narrowed down the, the possible range of grades all that much so uh, all that means is that the information in this data set does not 
give us overly much information to really narrow down precisely a forecast for an individual for an individual's grade. Okay, but that is just uh, what the data are like. So that's it. Thank you.